Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Empty to Come video, let's talk about checkerboard rendering, shall we? This isn't going to be a full analysis, because, well, that would take quite a while, although if there is enough requests, I might do a longer version of this very video. But, Frostbite have decided to reveal some information at GDC last week concerning checkerboard rendering on not just Battlefield 1, but also Mass Effect Andromeda, and how they managed to wrangle an acceptable amount of performance on the PS4 Pro using this very technique. So, checkerboard rendering has been a bit of a hot topic, because many would say it's not native 4K, and regardless of all that, the performance and the visual uh, impact is definitely a kind of a happy middle ground, to say the least. Essentially, the developers have pointed out that if you use checkerboard rendering versus uh, 1800p regular rendering, you save about 13.4 milliseconds of time, which is an awful lot. To give you an indication, in one of their screenshots they have uh, 1800p, this is with Mass Effect Andromeda with CB, that's once again checkerboard rendering, at around 23.4 ms, whereas on the other hand 1800p is unacceptably at 36.82 milliseconds at just regular old, plain old 1800p with no checkerboard rendering. So you might say to yourself, well, what's a few milliseconds between friends? Well, an awful lot when you start to factor in the number of milliseconds it takes to render a frame of animation is proportional to the frame rate you get. In other words, if you take 1,000, which is number of milliseconds in a second, and you divide that by, let's say, 33, that provides you around 30 frames per second. So if you were to say 36.82, let's just call it 37 for the sake of this video, you are suddenly under 30 FPS. In other words, you're going to start getting frame rate hitches and unacceptable performance. Whereas on the other hand, if you're around 23 or so, you can start locking that game, if you desire, to 30 FPS and you'll get a nice stable frame rate and you will have rendering budget left over. It saves an awful lot of performance when you're starting to render high um, quality effects. You might recall just after the PlayStation 4 Pro was released, there were also some comments from Mark Cerny and Sony as a whole telling us that the PS4 Pro did support native FP16 GCN instructions and that also um, the hardware had really good support for checkerboard resolving. So, according to, once again, the team, they have managed to wrangle out around 30% additional performance using these techniques for the PS4 Pro, which is pretty damn good, really. And this also provides a real-world example of what FP16 can provide in terms of performance benefit over full float performance. Now, once again, I don't want to go fully into what a float is in terms of graphics. I'm sure someone could either comment if they wanted to, or you could just simply Google, like, FP16. 32 versus FP16, but essentially it's a level of precision. Basically, it's the number of, well, numbers after a decimal. So, obviously, if you were to have, let's say, if I was to say I'm going to pay you one, that doesn't sound very impressive. Like, you're going to say, what, one dollar? Whereas, on the other hand, if I was to give you the decimal, or sorry, if I was to say, okay, one, zero, 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 you're going to suddenly be a lot happier. And that's essentially what you're doing here. You're providing an additional level of accuracy. Now, obviously, that's not always required. So sometimes you can be a lot less accurate in graphics or whatever instruction you're trying to render or run, and that's absolutely fine. However, sometimes you do need that additional accuracy for your particular application. So overall, this is a pretty positive for games development, and I do believe that checkerboard rendering is going to become a lot more common. We're already starting to see deferred shading, which is obviously a little bit different to say the least, uh, becoming more popular in the PC. For example, one of the interviews we had with AMD with Scott Wasson, he was revealing some of the information about Vega. And of course, it's already public knowledge that Vega does have support for, or rather increased support for um, deferred rendering. One of the ways they've managed to do that is changes with the ROPS and level 2 cache. However, um, that's going to definitely start impacting the PC space. And consoles, because they are essentially finite in their resources, it does make sense to be more, well, frugal. As Frost point, as Frostbite excuse me, themselves pointed out, the majority of current titles are still at 900p or 1080p. 
Whereas the actual visual fidelity, for example, uh, detailed geometry and all of the other textures and other bits and bobs which start going into a game, essentially becomes lost. And so what they want to do is to reduce the shading cost of the majority of the graphics pipeline and compute geometry information for all pixels, 4K sample rate, adjacent pixels are strongly correlated and high quality geometry aware resolve to reconstruct. So all this basically means is that they were looking for a way to improve the visual quality by keeping performance is kind of a bit weird. Now checkerboard rendering is a very large topic and there are multiple forms of checkerboard rendering. So for example you can go with 2x2 two two pixels, 4x4, four four, whatever. And so what happens is that in the case, and this is vastly simplifying it, in the case of this particular implementation, what they did is have frame N, in other words, the first frame, and then combine that with the second frame, because obviously the difference between one frame and the next is very little, and then they resolve that using uh, various filters into the final image, and this produces a much higher level of quality. Do remember perhaps one of the most famous and original examples of this, but we've had a couple. One of them was Rainbow Six Siege, and a slightly earlier version, and slightly different, but still kind of similar in the basic implementation, was done with Killzone Shadowfall. All of these are, well, different technologies to improve the performance, and it's essentially a variant of alternate frame rendering. Anyway, I know this has been kind of a flying video, and I could go a lot more in depth into it, but I don't know, like, is this something you guys are super interested in? If so, give me some messages and I'll perhaps do a bit more of a breakdown. Um, I just don't want to do, like, a full analysis on checkerboard rendering if it's not something you're interested in, because it's a lot of work. So let me know. Anyway, I'll see you all soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.